Booster. Go. Retro. Go. Vital. We're go flying. Guidance. Guidance, go. Launch control, this is Houston. We are go for launch. I feel the need. The need for speed. You've got to ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Join us or die. And welcome to Mark Groupie Outdoors, the podcast. I am your able-bodied, ready host, Mark Groupie. And welcome. Uh, glad to have you guys back. We are towards the end of waterfowl season, I guess. Well, Ryer, why don't you say hi? Hello, everybody. I am the millennial Ryer Porter. I get ahead of myself sometimes. I got, got to introduce got to introduce Ryer. Got to inter, introduce our social media platforms. You're gonna make me do it, huh? Uh, let's of see. Uh, the people want that from you, Mark. Um, all it's right. It's more so, fun if you do it and stumble through it than it is for right. me to just do so it. So we have m- m- we have uh, www.markgroupyoutdoors.com. We have uh, we have. The community show dot TV. We have um, Mark Rupi Outdoors, the Facebook page. I said we have the community show Facebook page. We have the our YouTube channel. You can check us out on the, the community show and Mark Rupi Outdoors. I think they're under both. No, and that one's the community show. Just the community show is our mm-hmm. videos now. Yep. Is Mark Rupi Outdoors a YouTube channel that does not exist anymore? Or do we just don't freshen that up with our new stuff? We just changed the names of the of the channel because most of the videos we're putting on there now are the community show videos. Okay, so it just makes more sense to to have it as labeled as the community show. I mean, we could make it really long. It could be YouTube dot com slash the community show slash Mark Rupi Outdoors, but I mean that would take you three years to type. So just just for your sake of going to watch the videos, we'll keep. <laughs> I would say I, I I I already don't. Uh, I already, I already don't surf the world wide web very much. Uh, looking for, looking for stuff, mostly just to harass people on Facebook or whatever. We also have an Instagram page. We have an Instagram page at the Community Show. At the Community Show, uh, and we added recently a section to our website that contains some merch, some swag. Oh if yeah, you will. we got good stuff. We do. We have shirts. We have hats. We have calendars. We have mugs. We have stickers. We have decals. We have. Ca- did I say calendars? You did say calendars. I did say calendars. I'll say but calendars. We've got more than I'll, one. I'll say calendars again because it's a damn beautiful calendar. I think so. I think it. I think it looks nice. I think it will fit very nicely in somebody's yeah. wall. But here we are, February, and we still got calendars left. So we should uh, we should make sure people get those calendars while they're still relevant. You guys have 365 days to buy them, or or whatever <laughs> nah, 365 five, minus my, my, whatever minus, we've done today. Yeah, yeah, minus uh, f- 40 or 38 or something. Yeah, um, I don't do math. I only do social media. I gotcha. Um, uh, let's see. So, uh, what what else in our our warm up here? Do we got? Uh, well, we've got some. Uh, late goose seasons, right? Yeah, we got late goose season coming up. We're just, uh, as you will hear this, you're just a couple days before the late goose season. So hopefully you guys are all going to get out and whack some late season geese. We had the youth hunt. My youth hunt fell apart. They pulled the plug on my duck club this year, five days before the youth hunt. And I went to go do the youth hunt and I called the landowner and he said, there's no water out there. Uh Uh-oh. So... Anyways, awkward. But uh, did you try to fill it up with a hose or something? Yeah, no, there was no filling it up. Although it was rainy and nasty, it was maybe just sitting over the mud might have been good. But I had to disappoint poor Hudson, and uh, we didn't go out and chase waterfowl on the on the youth finale. So and uh, so, yep, late season waterfowl. Uh, turkey's coming up. Turkey's coming up. Pig, of course, is always there. We'll start getting after the pigs here. I, I think. Well, maybe we'll go up and chase them. I know we got to look at the look at the weather forecast, but maybe a Wednesday night, Thursday morning, or something in between storms here. And we're supposed to have some. Oh, rain's coming down. We're supposed to have some cold weather coming in, which doesn't always help with the pig hunting, but that's how it is. And uh, let's see what else do we got. Um, hopefully, you guys. Uh, 
did all your deer tag reporting and stuff like that. If not, you'll be stuck with a little bill when you go to get your tags next year. So pays to listen to Mark Rupi Outdoors, the podcast, because you can find out about these things. Always stacked full of informative Stacked full of vital information that you need for you to be a successful outdoorsman. <laughs> And, uh, well, today, uh, as our guest, we have Elias Ru Ruiz. He is the creator, owner, CEO, CFO, everything of Feather Raft. And I don't know if he, you've, uh, you've seen that on social media or any, anyone else's YouTube pages, but it's a pretty neat little personal raft um, concept that uh, helps people get out on water and enjoy it. Welcome, Elias. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so, tell us uh, what, what is what is Feather Raft? Feather Raft is a lightweight, rigid foam raft that doesn't need to be assembled or inflated at the bank, so it's real easy to get it on the water and get it into use, and it's super durable too. So, you can expect several years. Well. More than several years. More than of several seat, years. Yeah, I think they, they look pretty durable. Yeah. It's designed for stability. It's not designed for speed like most holes, the way it's shaped. It's basically a rectangle on the water. Uh -huh. But it's designed to displace the most amount of water so you can have a very shallow uh, freeboard. Uh -huh. And then you're also, the way that it's shaped is it gives you a, a lot of stability, especially when you're standing on the edges of it. So, okay. Staple platform. How, how long have you been putting this together? Oh, I actually, <laughs> for a fun project, uh, back in 2008, I was teaching science and I wanted to make something, a, a raft basically, because I, I have lower back problems. So I didn't want to sit in a little kayak and be stuck with my legs straight. I just can't do that. Mm -hmm. So I needed something wider, stabler, and I decided to make a, a raft out of two liter bottles a sheet of plywood and two chairs that I pulled out of the school's dumpster. I'll be dang. <laughs> so for under 30 bucks, I was floating. <laughs> <laughs> out of two liter bottles, huh? That was yeah. your flotation? Yeah, I gave my students some extra credit for bringing, bringing me a uh -huh. bottle. So I had 88 bottles woven to a sheet of plywood, and that's kind of what kicked off the whole idea. <clears throat> Did that float you? Yeah, had over uh, over 300 pounds of buoyancy, and I don't weigh 300 pounds yet, so it worked. <laughs> Did you have a thought there, Ryer? You looked like you were going to... I was, I was just laughing. Something. I was enjoying the anecdote. Um, <laughs> well, uh, that, that was the conception of the whole thing. But I started to play with different materials and, and uh, you know, some research and development experimentation basically led me to a, a foam core that's coated in a very durable plastic. So, uh -huh. And I didn't actually start my company till 2014 is when I incorporated as an LLC. Okay. Um, what what would you say? What's the, what's the dimensions of? Do you just have one size right now? Uh, I have two that are registered with the Coast Guard. One of the large one, the original one, is ninety six inches by forty eight inches by six inches. So kind of back to that sheet of plywood size. Uh -huh. But it, you know, the, if you do the math on it, it displaces nearly sixteen cubic feet and sixty pounds per cubic foot. So you're displacing. You have about nine hundred pounds of buoyancy. Wow. Yeah, and so, don't go ahead. So no, for Ryer and his girlfriend, almost, <laughs> almost. <laughs> Keyword. <laughs> she listens to these too. Does she? Oh, yeah. I, I'm sorry, honey. She'll get a good laugh out of that one. Yeah. Uh, so forgive my ignorance, but you said registered with the Coast Guard. Now I don't, I don't know anything about boat manufacturing, or it sounds like that that's some sort of legal proceeding that you have to do. Tell me about that process. What it. How come you have to register it with the Coast Guard? Yeah, so they frown on you making and selling <laughs> boats without them knowing about it. And I found that out the hard way. Uh, I sold one to a, a guy in the military who took it to Arkansas and wanted to register it. And he tried to tell him it was homemade, but it had my logos on the side. So I had to give him a certificate of origin. And the only way to get that is to have a manufacturer identification code. And the only way to get that is to go through the Coast Guard. So you have to pretty much tell them what you're doing, how you're manufacturing it. They came out to my house, inspected the product, and then a couple weeks later, voila, I'm in the system. <laughs> so 
if they if they if they find a feather raft at a border crossing in Mexico and California with uh, 300 pounds of cocaine on it, they can trace it back to you, huh? They'll know who built it at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen those? Uh, have you seen the drug smuggling submarines and the half submersibles that that uh, they've they've caught running through the Gulf? I have not. There's a. Uh, I don't know if I saw this as a YouTube show, maybe made by, I guess, Vice or Motherboard. If any of you nerdy YouTubers know what I'm talking about, they make like documentary shows on YouTube, but, uh, or if I saw it on the Discovery Channel. But they've got, I mean, they, these, these drug runners are making, uh, basically submarines and half submersibles to go on these multi-day trips and just they pack them full of cocaine and whatnot uh, to bring it over here. And it's kind of cool, actually, how they make these things. I mean, they're making submarines out of propane tanks and, and all those sort of stuff. Huh. So it's, it's kind of interesting. I'm surprised you haven't happened upon that, Mark. Seems like something you'd know better than me because you're just so chock full of knowledge. <sighs> I don't. You gave me a skeptical look, like I was trying to make a joke. I wasn't trying to make a joke. I just sometimes Mark's a little trivia book, so he knows lots of stuff. Yeah, I, I guess I need to bump up my my trivia on on the drug trade. I guess that's where I'm I'm falling short in that area. And it's that, big now. Shows about about drug lords are in right now. I think Netflix has two or three of their own just right right this second. So. It's the new cool thing. Oh, remind me before we get done. We need to um, talk about the uh, um, the um, d bag contest. Oh yeah. Okay. We'll do that at the end. Yeah. Don't don't let me, don't, don't let me forget about that. Um, so you, now you're registered with the Coast Guard. Now people can get a a number uh, a number on there, but because you, I guess. You need that to float out in the delta and go fishing. Is that right? In order really? to in order to register a, a watercraft, it has to have a hull identification code, and the first three characters of a hull identification code are your manufacturer identification code from the Coast Guard. So, because this is a super simple boat technically, then it has to come with a hull a hull ID number and a manufacturer certificate of origin, which allows you to register it in in any of the fifty states. So if you just make a homemade raft and want to take it out in the Delta, do you need to have it registered? If you motorize it in California, yes. So you, you put just the smallest electric motor on it and want to, on a little raft and float around, you have to register it. That's California law. What if it's huh. not motorized? If it's not motorized, you do not need to register it. So Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer are good. They can go. They're good to go. And I, pa I paddled my raft for years before I ever motorized it as well, but... Customers were wondering, could you motorize it? So, so that was that was the whole thing that led to the registration was the mo motorization of it, right? Because I had a customer wanting to do it in Arkansas, and he found out that, well, so the first one I registered, I claimed that I built it because I did, but they didn't realize I was also a company. Hmm. And you're allowed to build your own watercraft and go ahead and get it registered through the just through the state, and they'll give you a whole identification number. But if you take something somebody else built. You can't, it just doesn't fly. <laughs> gotcha. You ever put a big enough motor on one to get it up on plane? No. Uh, <laughs> I, I just went to my buddy's house and he bought a, like a mud motor. I, uh -huh. I forget how many horsepower it is. And he's, he's got it all ready to go on the feather raft. He was just waiting for really? a little better, better weather to see. <laughs> now, do you need to sit up fairly far front to counterbalance that when you get that? Because that's, a, you that's can. a lot of torque on the back. Huh? I don't. I, I'm curious to see. I don't even have a clue how, how, how it's going to go. How this is gonna work and I've out. talked to some Coast Guard naval architecture people, and they've suggested to try not to go too high on it. But I'm, I just want to see what it looks like, yeah. though, anyway. <laughs> I'm looking at motors too myself, just gas power, just just to test them out. Uh huh. So right now, you just recommend really just getting the most basic uh, basic uh, electric trolling motor and a 12 volt battery and tool along, huh? That's yeah, all, that's all you need. You know, if and I and I even recommend a 40 pound thrust because I know people have gone to 50, but it's a heavier motor. It'll also drain your battery faster. I go with a 40. I usually troll around the lake. For ten hours, really, on one battery, but I'm okay. only going on like one or two, so I'm hitting all the coves, just following the coastline, fishing, and uh -huh. it takes all day. But yeah, that's what it's for. It's my, it's like my lazy boy on the water. <laughs> uh -huh. And 
is is each one a, a, a single single occupant thing? That's how I designed it. However, like I said, that its its capacity is nine hundred pounds before it's underwater. Uh, I've had seven hundred fifty pounds in a pool just testing it, and I would say a safe working load is about half of that, about five hundred pounds is what I would suggest. Because once you start going faster with more weight, the nose is a little lower in the water, and this is already a super low profile. So yeah. So you might get your nose in the water a little bit if you're hitting weight and stuff like that. Right. It's not. It's not going to sink though. It's yeah, but it's <laughs> not not designed for speed. It's designed. No. It's just designed to to keep you out there upright, comfortable, dry, picking weight. So what what would you say it's ideal? What what's what's a feather raft's ideal niche? I so I designed it for bow fishing because I oh, okay. the higher you stand, the higher of angle of incidence you have which makes it easier to see into the water. Right. And it makes your shots a little... It looks more realistic when you're shooting at the fish, meaning... Less refraction. Yes, less refraction, so you can aim a little better. Closer, yeah. There's still going to be some refraction, but you get used to it. Yeah. Well, obviously, yeah, because if you're obvious, or maybe it's not obvious, if you're straight over a fish, you, you would... Drop, you would shoot straight at it, and so it just right. makes sense that the farther and farther your angle changes, the the more right. and more you, you got to shoot underneath them. So, yeah, uh, and I also had in mind duck hunting when I made it up because I wanted something stable enough that I could shoot off of without having to worry about flipping over. Yeah, so that's uh, in full disclosure. Um, Elias brought brought uh, uh, brought us one, and I'll I'll be using it uh, th- this year. But uh, I see some 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 cool uh, duck hunting applications for it and getting out into 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 places uh you know i had last year or two years ago our uh, our rice ground flooded out all the way and i took my kayak out but kayaks aren't so much fun to uh, a lot of time to, to to shoot from and move around from and shoot i could have uh um the, the kayak was good for covering some some distance there but i could have towed uh this feather raft <clears throat> right behind it with with decoys and the dog and everything because I've got I've got a bunch of stuff that's got to go go out with me and uh, and and then I'll have a, a dry place to put to put the dog on and put my stuff on because now you get out there and now now what are you going to do you're going to either shoot from the kayak or stand knee or waist deep in the water and this would uh, give me a whole other whole other option once I once I get out to my spot yeah I've got. What I prefer for seating is just a bucket with a spin seat lid on there too, so you can track your shot instead of, uh-huh. you know, if you're in a kayak, you're stuck. Facing yeah, you, forward. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you, you, you kind of have a ninety degree angle where you're you're effective, and on either side of that, you're uh, you're kind of binding up a bit. Right. So swiveling on there's pretty pretty quick and easy as well. Yeah. Do you have any in 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 the works or in the thoughts uh, thought process of of uh, uh, take down blind that goes around it, or is there some other manufacturers already have something that would work for that? Uh, I haven't. Well, no, I actually haven't seen a blind that would fit specifically for the raft. Um, I have seen a little cot that would work, and that obviously that's not a blind. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have seen lay down blinds though that would work on the raft. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. And I've had a lot of people ask me about that. I've I've personally just never never tried it. Gotcha. I think I'd fall asleep if I was laying down waiting for birds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I may have to mess with that this year. Make a little. I, I've I've got some spots up in the foothills where we got some ponds and and uh, I was going. God, if I could get out by that island, uh, that would be a that would be a cool spot for woodies and mallards. And uh, and I was w- wondering how I was going to do that. Now my question has been answered. Yeah. Try. Give it a try. We took. We've made changes through the raft throughout the years too and right now there's no hardware on the deck so you could lay down on that with with nothing poking up from underneath you Mm -hmm. (laughs) we got rid of the d loops and the anchor cleats or the rope cleats and for one it makes it easier to ship these by stacking them and you don't have to even if you're taking two or three i I usually carry two on top of my tahoe and now i don't have to space them anymore since everything's just nice and flush i gotcha how heavy is one of those currently they're about 70 pounds 
Yeah. Pretty light. Yeah, no, I was watching Elias take it off the top of his truck by himself and 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 stack it over the stack it over uh, near us and uh yeah, handled it handled it pretty well. Don't know if it was a 40 mile an hour wind blowing if you'd want to carry it like you're doing. Yeah, you would have to hold it. <laughs> I've done I've done windy situations, but I've only been blown over one time. We we go to the park by my house and uh my my kids like to go over there when it floods and it was a super windy day and you have to walk between these brick walls and it was just like a wind tunnel when right. I came around the corner and I <laughs> pushed me over on the grass, but it was no big deal. <laughs> so it, it, it's back to its ideal application is small farm ponds, uh, in, in, anywhere where, where you're, you're getting in the water and going fishing, you know, right away. Yeah. Anywhere you want to go, that's, if it, you know, something if that doesn't have a ramp for sure, this would be good for it, but you can pull up on the ramp and launch just as easily. Yeah. I was, I was thinking, cause I've, I've, I've kind of wanted to drift and fly fish like up by Capel's Lake or something mm -hmm. like that. And being able to just park and drag that sucker in and, uh, and, uh, and drift along and fly cast, uh, that, that I think this might be a, a cool platform for that. Yeah. Actually I had a, a buyer contact me for that reason. Um, in, in the retail sector, they thought there was a it'd be a great market for for fly fishing since you have that elevation above the water to, right. to get that fly going. I see a video coming, Ryer. Do you? Yeah, I see a I see a Sierra fly fishing feather raft uh, video coming. That would be cool. Um, so you, you've got you said you've got two two models of it. There's the bigger. There's that basically sheet of plywood size one right. and then there's a yeah and then i also experiment with the smaller one uh, i think it was 60 68 inches by 36 by six uh -huh. very similar in shape just smaller for just to make it lighter i think this one weighs about 35 pounds i've probably only made about 10 of them just to test out but it is actually one of my registered models with the okay. coast guard as well would you say it's more or less stable than a paddle board? The 36 inch wide yeah. one? Yeah. I would say it's similar. 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 You know, it's popular, I see a lot, is the yoga. Ladies going mm -hmm. out and doing yoga on the paddle board. I, 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 By I, popular, Mark means he's tried this. No, I have not tried this. My wife has tried it. My, my wife my wife has tried it. She, she's enjoyed it. I, I, I could see like 12 of these floating on my pond and a bunch of. Uh, 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 lady, ladies out there doing, uh, doing, uh, doing pond yoga. Yes. What do they call that? Pool? I don't know. <laughs> Stand up paddle yoga. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I've actually thought about that market as well. It is super stable for that. Probably twice as stable as a stand up paddle board if you're trying to do yoga on there. Uh huh. So my wife might be poaching my feather raft for just that reason. <laughs> You'll need to color it nice colors like yeah. teal and pink. Yeah, I know. She's not gonna like to really, the, she's not to gonna really like capture the, that the black the black one. She's gonna yeah. she's gonna want some lighter yoga colors. Have you ever thought of maybe doing like duck hunter yoga or something to really help promote stability and, <laughs> and core strength among duck hunters? I mean No, I, I ha I haven't thought of that. It could it could I, be a market, I, Mark. It it could be. It could be the last market I search as, as I mean people, we could we could have twelve as I, have, as, I, as, I have even, as I have even less listeners and followers than I do now as I start duck hunting yoga <laughs> my 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 fans leave in droves but um uh yeah there's 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 a lot of cool applications that I can think think of for this when you brought it out I was just going god I could use it for this I could use it for that um uh, uh price range what are the price ranges on them right now uh, I the handmade ones right now I sell them for about five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. But it's been a range. I've sold them in different ranges. I, I try to work with my customers. Um, basically, I'm just I want them out there in the public side mm -hmm. to be seen because we're actually going into mass production. So okay, the handmade ones are more like a proof of concept. Gotcha. Um, still great quality, but I want something that I can produce a lot faster. Mm -hmm. But surfing, I don't surf, but it looks stable enough for me to surf. That's you know that that'd be kind of cool because you get a you get a fat old guy who has, has balance issues like myself <laughs> and take it down to the coast and surf on it. 
I have no idea. I have a friend who owns one who's been surfing for twenty something years. He would be the guy to test it out. <laughs> okay. Well, it, it may have to. It may have to go down to the beach with us next summer. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an interesting one. I've I've never taken it into breakers. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? Yeah, you got any uh, uh, well questions for? I mean, I don't know how much he'll be able to answer this because of trade secrets and stuff like that. But you said you hand make them right now. Yes. Is there anything you tell us about that process that won't give away, you know? Yeah, it's no big. It's already actually, it's actually patent pending. So this is already disclosed information anyway. So okay. it's because uh, I'd be curious. I'd, I'd like to know yeah. So today. currently, currently, and I've gone through different iterations, but currently I buy foam already to the 96 by 48 by six inch dimensions. And then I've created a bunch of um, basically jigs that help me shape the foam myself. And then from there, we go ahead and coat it, and we put the labels on it after that and box them up and ready to go. About how long does it take you to make one? Uh, currently, I think I have it down to about four to five hours per raft. Okay. Well. It used to take me like five days to make one. <laughs> <laughs> and so you said you're looking at going into production now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a couple... There's two different manufacturers that I'm looking at that can build between three to 400 a day. So that, what's the process been looking for somebody to, to do that? Oh, that's work. I 90% of my job is research. Um, even though I spent a lot of time building these two, but, uh, sourcing materials, finding companies, figuring out what their capabilities are. Um, contacting people, networking. It's a, it's an arduous pro process. And sometimes you you hit a dead end too. You might take one road and figure out that mm, maybe that's not exactly the quality I was looking for, or, or something's not quite right, and kind of go got to go back to the drawing board. So it has been a a, a tough long road that I've been working my way down. <laughs> yeah, and you're pretty committed on this project. Oh, I, yeah. I won't I won't I won't share with the public with your your investment involvement in this, but you you uh. You have chips pushed towards the middle of the table here. Oh, yeah. I I think it's going to take off only because there's really nothing quite like it on the market. It's super simple. You know the saying, keep it simple, stupid. And that's really what I'm going for is the lightest, simplest boat that you could just throw in the water, not have mm -hmm. to worry about flipping over, motorizing it if you'd like to, or just paddling it. It's, it's just It has a lot of multi-purpose uses, so... I think it'll pick up once I'm actually in, the, in production because right now I, I just can't build them fast enough or cheap enough. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Um, if uh, people want to find you on either website or social media or, or what, uh, what's, what's the best way for people to find Feather Raft? Yeah, uh, quick and easy one is featherraft.com. We are also on Facebook. I uh, I know we have a Feather Raft page. My actual company name is Cold Face Creations, though, because we do plan on bringing other other products to the market. Um, but Feather Raft is one of our pages. Cold Face Creations is another page. I'm also on Instagram at Feather underscore Raft, and those are the those are the main things that I do. I, oh, I have a YouTube channel as well. It's uh, Cold Face C O A L F A C E one seven three. Okay. Very good. Anything else for this fine gentleman that you got, Rare? Do you guys want to do a would you rather question now? Sure. Yeah. The, well, as usual, we'll do our icebreaker question at the end. after the ice is already broken. <laughs> so, Just going to keep demolishing the ice until there's yes, nothing left. That's right. We'll turn the ice into slush. <laughs> I, I, I thought this one would be cool because uh, you could reference a movie with it and I know how much Mark loves movies. So the question is, would you rather relive the same 365 days or relive the same day 365 times or live a year and then forget it all? Mark goes second. Can I just repeat the question? So do go basically go all Groundhog Day for a year. That's the movie I was referencing. Yep. Okay. Although it wouldn't be a full, you wouldn't be technically going Groundhog Day for a year. You'd only be going to Groundhog Day in your own year. Right. Right. Because you'd be living the same, same, same day, worldly day, 360. So times. would you rather go Groundhog Day or 51st dates? 
or whatever in heck that movie was where she keeps forgetting everything. Well, no, you would just live a year and then you'd never, you wouldn't remember. Any remember of it. that you did it. Yeah, it would, you would just kind of, I guess, have sleepwalk through the year or something. Well, I, I've got Alzheimer's on my dad's side and Alzheimer's on my mom's side, so I don't know. You may have a boss after a while that actually does that very thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, what were we doing last week? <laughs> I get to meet a lot of new people, anyways. That's the good news. Um, so you're so you're going to take the year of doing things and not remembering anything. Well, I thought our guest was the answer first. I was just, oh, well, I, I was, just, I was just, just, I was okay. just, I was just uh, um, re refining the question. So okay, sure. I think I do the Groundhog Day thing where you where you start the day over every day. How, however, that would be very frustrating because <laughs> you figure stuff out and kind of like he did in the movie and then everything starts over <laughs> but i think it'd be fun yeah i mean the the plus of that you, you just kind of get to keep refining your day you know till you make the you know the the, the perfect day um uh so there's uh there's that of course it might be a different option it might be might have a different answer if you didn't know that that day was going to end like Bill Murray never knew if that day was going to end. He thought he, he might be there in perpetuality. So if you if you knew if you knew it was going to end, you might have a have a different answer than I because yeah, I think I would choose that. I think I would I I think I would choose that. I I would if I knew it was going to end. I I think I'd see how good I could uh, make the one perfect day. What day from this past year do you think that you try to redo? Tuesday. Tuesday from, from last year. Perfect. I know exactly which one you're talking about. What Good day. choice, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. What day from last year would I choose to do? Um, let's see. You know, it would probably be when we were elk hunting in Wyoming and didn't get anything. And I could keep trying to home in on that and make make one of those days better because there was elk ahead and elk of us and just trying to figure out that day. And I I, I would just keep messing with that day and learning about elk till I till I till I made it perfect. I would just tweak it here and tweak it there and try try this and and so uh, that would that would be the day. Um, even though I got nothing, now who's to say that I don't get nothing anymore? And you just keep narrowing it down. Trying even even if I ended up with nothing on day three sixty five, I think because of everything I'd learn and do, and and so if you had to guarantee me the output outcome was the same outcome, um, uh, because I know I'd have some up close and personal experiences, and you can't beat uh, elk hunting in Wyoming for a whole year. Or so, so you already knew you were going to say that one. You did. I already, I already knew your answer. <laughs> no, you didn't. I did too. You did not know my answer. You're telling me you would have picked anything else other than, other than the elk, the elk hunting day. Well, I I was thinking when um, I uh, I missed that elk in uh, in Colorado the day before I got that Another one. Elk hunting day. Um, yeah. Well. Jeez, I, you're not very specific. I was elk hunting a lot last year. <laughs> um, uh, you know, when that, I, I wouldn't mind reliving when that nice big boar came underneath the fence and I like shot it and the, creased its tail or something. Remember that, that great chance they had oh, there? Oh, yeah. Right, right, by, right by that. Yeah, the, right the at pond. the crossing by the pond. I swallowed, mm. swallowed the olive on that one. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind being able to relive that one because that was a great boar that I just totally screwed up. He was close, too. Yeah, yeah it was crap. good. It was good. It was, that, was, that was set up. I hunted it just perfect. I did everything just right except for, except for swallowing a big one when it came time to release my arrow. <laughs> So, um, uh, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, a couple of the pig things I wouldn't mind. Well, you only get to redo, redo one day. I, mean, you I can't know. Just keep redoing but, well, you said day, you knew though. like it was a foregone conclusion, and I can think of several things that I'd like to if, redo. If somebody, I'm not a betting man, but if somebody had asked me to bet on on what kind of day I think that you would have chosen, then I'm. I was pretty positive it would have been the elk hunt from Wyoming. Okay. All right. Well, ding, ding, ding. Ryer wins. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pig hunt that I would have redone. I was on some public land, and I spotted some pigs about 
I don't know, 250 yards away, and I snuck up on them. It took me over two hours. You're bow hunting? Bow hunting. And I get about 15 feet from these these pigs. I get down on my knee. I was trying to get to this tree so I can get in, get in the shadows before he got there. And uh, I was only a few feet away from this shadow, and I, so I squat down with my bow, and he's coming right at me, and I, I draw back, and all of a sudden, right when I'm about to let go because he's going broadside, he just jumps like three feet in the air. So that makes me, you know, move a lot and try to re, re put my pins on him and actually it was a recurve, but, you know, get my sights on him mm. and I, I shot and missed. <laughs> yeah. Well, that that's similar what this one board did to me. He came across, he came underneath this fence right where I was new and I had the pin on him. All of a sudden, as soon as he came across, he went, Whoa! he just froze and just look at me. And I just rolled over and urinated on myself. <laughs> and, uh, and he, he, he was alert to me. And, and right when I shot, he took off. So he moved and I jerked the, jerked my bow and everything. It was just a total disaster. Yeah. I was and, so disappointed. All that time spent sneaking up on him and getting yeah. 15 feet away. That was away. public land too, huh? Public land. Yeah. Would that be public land down South or public land up North? Uh, I won't make you do, disclose your place uh, because yeah, there's not many even, people that uh, want to give up their public I don't spot. even care. It's actually by San Luis Reservoir. A lot of oh, people okay, know yeah. about it. It's just a hard hike. Where, okay. So a lot of people, keeps a lot of people out anyway. Okay. Uh, is, is it that, what, what you call it, uh, um, just above the reservoir, you go up the road above the reservoir that fish? Yeah, there's the upper cottonwood, yeah, lower cottonwood, cottonwood yeah. uh, San Luis. There's the San Luis side of it as well. So there's mm -hmm. three little areas that you can hunt over there. Mm -hmm. There's they're pig in there. You just got to find a good year where there's enough water to be in the pools in the back. And you got to be able to hike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hot and it's dry and it's steep. Yeah, it's uh, um, is it open? Are they open all year? Uh, the the property's open all year. However, you can't hunt between. As a matter of fact, it just closed last week, and it should have. It usually closes the the last week in January to hunting, and then it opens again for archery. I want to say archery deer is when it opens up again. So July. Mm -hmm. So it's closed to hunting for what? What is that? Four or five months. Okay. I found the picture. Oh, there it is! Look at that. <laughs> Look at he cr he cr crossed that fence right there, and um, we just teed up. Can you see that? That's about what I had to same distance, very yeah. very close. And he spotted me, and I just if you if you if you look at that about ten frames later, you'll see. Uh, Total disaster. So, yeah, I let one fly, and well, he he literally jumped about three feet in the air, just out of nowhere, and like I like you said, you know, you, you jerk and you try to get it back on target, but I missed. Yeah. So Fisher commented that that was clearly the cameraman's fault. What's that? Who did Sawyer Fisher? Oh, it was. I was I was obviously down and below the at, at the at the at the cover level, and you were propped up there so much you couldn't help but seeing you. Know, your big old red face perched up there, and I'm I'm nice down in the green grass. See, I'm I'm lower than you and every you're always already at the top of my bow. And here you are waving that giant camera out there, and if I'd been by myself, undoubtedly I'd have been a dead pig. But no, I got to take you along. <laughs> I think we can agree if you had shot that pig, then I don't think anybody would have been complaining about the cameraman's position. Well, sometimes you screw things up, sometimes you don't. <laughs> I mean, I just don't have any con I don't have any control of when you mess things up. Such a, such a specific thing to say, Mark. <laughs> well, sometimes you screw things up, and sometimes you don't screw things up. Well, it's 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 obvious when you, it's your fault is when I don't get something. Exactly, it coincides I mean, with your success I mean, it, if, it, if it's it, successful. It is. I mean, there's just a direct straight line correlation there. The correlation does not equal causation. My statistics teacher taught me that. Well, those statistics teachers only yeah they're only they're, accurate they're about half the time. Yeah, <laughs> and, and they don't hunt. Sixty percent of the time, it works every time. Yeah, and they don't hunt. If they if they, if they if they hunted, then then they then they would know clearly. It's it's always someone else's fault. It's damn sure not my fault. Just for everybody who thinks that they uh, they want to become a cameraman in the outdoor industry, just know this is what you have to put up with. Any, every, anytime something goes wrong, you will be blamed. Ah, oh, Ryer. <laughs> now, how many times have I actually blamed you for a hunt gone wrong? Oh, none. 
None. Okay. Thank you. Well, no, well, I, I, I have, I, I have you heard. Do, you do get a fair amount of harassment, though. Yeah, I do. Um, but I, I have heard, and there are some famous on on, uh, on on video times where the the star of the show was drilling his cameraman, and and there's been some other times I've heard some other people are get on their cameraman. Which, speaking of, uh, kind of some sad news coming down. Um, you know, I started being a, a cameraman. I was for Dwight Shue on Bow Hunter Magazine's television show, and I guess he is gravely ill with cancer right now. So, uh, you guys, all keep him in your prayers. But uh, he has uh, he has cancer, and uh, he's had it off and on. But now it's looked like it's taking its last toll on him. So, uh, but uh, he, he used to. He was he was always professional and always kind to me, but he did not clearly. If he could not have a cameraman there, he he would have uh, he, he would have liked it. Although uh, sometimes he had some friends that weren't as able bodied as him, and I carried their stuff around along with my stuff. So I guess I made up for my my uh, way I clogged up his hunt sometimes. How I helped him, but uh, anyways, yeah, Dwight Shue is pretty sick right now, so keep him in your prayers. Um, what else do we have for this fine gentleman while he's here? We gave him some lovely parting gifts. Give him a, we get, and uh, for you people listening, get on the get on the store. We, we'll, we'll get our our new hats and our our new shirts up on there. But we've got calendars, we've got mugs, we've got stickers, we've got decals. Get to the store, buy that stuff, support the community show so we can get people out in the field. Your, uh, your support definitely helps us do that. So uh, uh, where, you, where you see fit, uh, join in, be part of the community, and uh, we love to see that stuff out there. I think maybe we need to have like uh, an award or something like that, a prize for someone who has the best pictures of the – maybe we need to start a contest like soon. And uh, with the best pictures with – with our stuff in, and, in and game, yeah, and, and hunting pictures. So, you know, go over the air and, of course, then guess, I don't know if we're making people buy stuff, but uh, if you do. I mean, we can't make people do anything. This is America. This is a, or Mer- American. American. I'm an American. But if you want to be a real fan and, if, and if, not be a loser, I mean, yeah. you kind of so we'll say you I, should it, buy the things. That's right. So, see, so maybe we'll have a contest for the swaggiest person with the with the most game. <laughs> Some somebody's gonna just Sw- carry all their ha- stuff around. Hashtag in the field. swag bag. <laughs> somebody's gonna carry all their stuff around in the field, and then they're gonna get something. <laughs> they're gonna, there's gonna be mugs hanging from antlers. Yeah, that's right. Hat, <laughs> like hats, hats on, open. hats on pigs' heads, and and little hooves holding coffee mugs, and <laughs> quail reading, looking at calendars, and I'm already making a plan too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah antelope with a community sticker on their side, covering a blood hole or something. That's actually not a bad way to do that. Yeah, I'm able to. <laughs> Um, the patented, <laughs> the patented community show, social media in the field, blood sensor, B- blood plug, <laughs> <laughs> so that you can post the pictures of your animal. You know, that's what we need to do. People. We we have we have a pla- we have a plastic plug with a with a, a, a you know like a vinyl community show thing, and you stick the plug into the wound, and the community show thing covers up the blood spot. <laughs> there you go. There we go. The community show blood plug. You're speechless. <laughs> I, I just want to. Ma- I just want to make sure that you pronunciate that well every time. Yeah, community show blood plug. Community show blood plug. <laughs> Say it fast five times. Community show blood plug. Yeah, my enunciation isn't that great, so I'm gonna. Yeah. Not, I'm gonna refrain from that because I know I where this is going. Sheet, a sheet I slid upon a slid sheet. I said, "Good blood, bad blood. Good blood, bad blood. Good blood, bad blood." Mark sits and does this in front of the mirror. Rubber for baby minutes. buggy bumper. Rubber baby buggy bumper. Bef- before every podcast, she sells seashells by the seashore. <laughs> I don't know if anything else informative is coming out, coming out of this conversation. Uh, should we end it now, or should we just keep rolling yeah, on and see on. what happens? Well, we 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 need to talk about the um, uh, community bag. Yeah, I've been I've been noticing that you you've been modifying the contest. Well, I. I I felt to because I, I I felt and as a and as the uh, originator of the contest I can 
do whatever in the heck I want with this. But uh, you're the true communist. I, 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 felt, I, I felt the debagginess was uh, uh, in 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 quantity and quality was uh, was 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 getting out of hand, and there were starting to come uh, uh, profanity and. Uh, and, and whatnot. So I decided. Well, we'll pull the plug on that, and we'll just make it on on the on the on. If you're gonna be a if you're gonna be a d bag, be a good d bag. So be a wholesome d. Be a wholesome d bag. So get out and show yourself uh, uh, doing some, doing doing good things. And uh, yeah, we'll so do, now we'll, is the contest. You have to have one. D bag thing and one actual nice thing to balance. Well, out you know, a it's a great thing. Or? It's my contest. I'll decide. I'll decide. I'm, I'm not. I, I'm I'll, just trying I, to clarify for the people, Mark. You know, I I don't know. You know, I I've I have to honor what I said. So be you know, the first part of the contest was the first part of the contest. And this we was get, this was a staged contest. We had stages of the contest. Yeah, just, we had stages of the contest. And when it comes to being a natural D-bag, you get people like Francisco Pena and I Ooh, mean, cold <laughs> out. and uh, shots fired. And uh, actually, I, this was a ploy by Mark to be the D-bag. He wants to win all of his own swag. Yeah, I want to win my. He's harnessed the power of his podcast. <laughs> <laughs> to to attack my fans, <laughs> to, to yeah. Attack Francisco the is just a total natural d bag, and uh, and I mean he, he he could dominate. But then uh, then Jeffrey Ward uh, made some good, made a good comment. Took the reins in his own hands. Took the contest to a different way and said, "I'm just going to do good things." So I got to give. I mean. He he, uh, he uh, like I said he 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 took the initiative himself to uh, to uh, to to do to steer it in a good direction. So I've got to put some weight on that there. Um, hit Craig Garrett, his natural bagginess constantly comes through. <laughs> of course, we all know McKaylen Borland is born baggy, and his uh, and his his interest. Borland more like born bag. <laughs> 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 so, so, uh, so, so, McKay, McKay's in there. He's submitted a number of number of number of entries. Matter of fact, he's a if you don't call him a pro staffer for feather raft, but uh, he gets out there with his feather raft and catches a lot of fish and shoots a lo- shoots a lot of birds. Um, uh, so we've got uh, we we we, we it, it's a it's it's a close it's a close race, but. Uh, We'll see who uh, finishes strong over the next couple of days with uh, with doing good thing bagginess. Now we had talked about doing uh, a little bit of a different a different thing going forward here with the video submissions. Uh, is that still something that you were thinking about? Yeah. So maybe to, to kind that, of give so. people the opportunity to be part of the contest that may not want to clutter up their yeah feed with so some bagginess. people some people have made the comment that they really don't want it, and i don't blame you be a be a bag on your own page and your family's going gosh what are you doing your in your clients you know some people use this for business and stuff so if you wish to make a video submission you can make a video submission and what's the best way for them to get that to us Ryer? uh you can send it to us however you want i mean you can message it to us on any one of our Social pages, so Facebook or Instagram works best. Uh, you could email it to us, markrubyoutdoors at gmail.com. You could get it burnt into a DVD. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's that's our, dedication. Message us for our address and send it to us. Uh, if anybody can make VHSs, well, there we go. Then that would really, the, you could do that. What, uh, if, what if we did it on eight millimeter and the soundtrack was on an eight track tape? I don't even know how to play that. So uh, <laughs> if Mark can view it, if Mark can figure out how to get that to yeah. work, because I don't know, I've never played that before. So, uh, so uh, anyways, uh, if you could make us a soundtrack and put it on vinyl. <laughs> go. So there, there's a number of ways you guys can get your, you could, you could show here. up to our doorstep and perform for us for don't, one minute. No, don't tell them that someone <laughs> like Francisco will do that. <laughs> Automatic disqualification yeah. if we yeah. see you do this in person. Honey, my wife, you see my wife. Honey, there's a naked Hawaiian outside our fr- our, our our front door uh, juggling cats. <laughs> do you know anything about this? <laughs> juggling cats? Yeah. You didn't okay. hear Steve Martin, uh, that one of his routines was uh, was talking about um, 
uh, inhumanity of this uh, of this of of this new sport, and I'm talking about, of course, cat juggling. Take the little cats, 10, 12 weeks old, and juggle them for money. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. <laughs> I wish there was more comedians like that these days. Yeah. And actually, there was a clip of a cat juggling, actually, in the Steve Martin movie, The, the Jerk. So, um, The cans. He, he hates, hates these, these cans. cans. That's right. Well, you've seen the movie. Have you seen the movie, The yeah, Jerk? Yeah, I have. All right. You didn't see the part when you, they were doing the cat I juggling? I don't remember the cat juggling, no. Yeah, okay. Well. You have to look that up. Yeah, I'll YouTube it. YouTube that. <laughs> um, so, anyways, uh, uh, somehow get us a video submission of 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 your bagginess. It could be a good bagginess or bad bagginess. Could be a rant. Could be a rant. Yeah, and, and calling and, out, calling out bags. Yeah, calling out bags. Uh, 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 other uh, other. Uh, uh, people in the in the in the community, or people just in the uh, in the hunting community in general. But uh, um, so send us a rant, send us a video submission, and uh, that'll probably be our strong finish. They've got till Friday, right? Friday. So you've got a solid five days. You get a solid five days. So we'll put that out in a on our on our Facebook page. So you guys have written instructions also. What else we got? Anything? I don't think so. Is there anything else that we've solved our icebreaker? We've yeah, got that done out of the way. Did you did end. you answer the question? Did I answer the question? Yeah. No, I don't have to answer the question. <laughs> I just pose the question. You're afraid. Why would I be afraid of answering? You're afraid the of answering the question. Uh, if I must answer the question, I'd probably do. I'd probably do one day over again, three hundred sixty-five times. I don't even know if that's a good question. I don't know who wouldn't do that. I don't know. Maybe some people just would get, uh, go insane after uh, uh, doing the same thing. Three yeah, every time I think times. of making you a co-host, now I'm reminded by the stupid questions you come up with and why you should not be. <laughs> Feel free. I, to I should prepared with I, your I, own I, question I should, mark. Well, you can you can you can still run the boards back there, but I just may take your microphone from you. <laughs> Fight me. Come fight me for it. <laughs> it's actually unwise. Mark's got old man strength. Old man strength. Well, um, yeah, I, I, I'd do the same one 365 days over. I was 50-50 on that because if you had a longer task that you wanted to accomplish, you'd, you'd need that whole year, but you'd forget about the whole thing. <laughs> That's the kicker for me. Yeah, I, you forget about then. Then what was the purpose? Then what's... What, maybe, maybe some people would like that whole year so that they could go maybe, do all the things that they've oh, always wanted to do but not wanted to have on what their conscience. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Their, their they could have the year of their lives and then never remember it. Hmm. They could have plausible but deniability. What, but would everyone else remember it? That's Is it off of everyone else's radar too? Hmm. That's not. That wasn't in the You son of a bitch, Ryer! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you it end up like the hangover. You'd have people coming at you, yeah, and telling you things that you did and you wouldn't remember. Yeah, so I, I, I guess. I mean, but some people do that every Friday, Saturday night. Yeah, anyways, they do. So. What, I think Francisco does that. I think quite often, doesn't he? <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, I think uh, that that's what uh, um, uh, the New England Patriots, the Los Angeles Rams, and Francisco have in common. It really takes a hell of a long time for them to score. <laughs> that was a terrible game. The commercials weren't even good to boot, well, and well, the that, halftime show was terrible, but that's expected. Yeah. You don't want to see Adam Levine take his shirt off. That was baggy. He did it in <laughs> stages, too, so it was 100% planned. Yeah. Like, each song, one article of upper upper body clothing came off to a finale of shirtless tattooed skinny boy yeah. gyrating on stage. It was uh, horrific. If it had been Shania Twain up there, and man, I feel like a woman taking objects of clothing off, as uh, she did in that video. That would have been going, a that would have been wardrobe okay, malfunction. See Adam Levine take his clothes off. Yeah, I was a little surprised that I don't, it, for family programming, it seemed seemed odd that they well, let him take his shirt all the way off. I mean, I, granted, there's nothing. Well, it's weird just a about guy that, taking but, his shirt off, but it's just, you know, it's just, I don't know. I think he just wanted to show us that he was semi buff or something like that. He was not really, though. 
Yeah, I don't know. Was, uh, <laughs> our family was debating that. Is he semi-buffed? Is he what, what is he? So I don't know. What was it, the conclusion? I mean, you guys have a full Senate the, there. So. Yeah, we did have a full Senate. We had actually, I had uh, of the nine kids, I had seven of them over last night. So that was cool. Had uh, seven, seven of the boys. And uh, um, uh, our consensus was most of the guys didn't care looking at Adam, at Adam Levine with his shirt off. They didn't care. No, most no most all the males in our house did not care about looking at Adam. I don't care. Yeah, I mean it was just it was kind of like what's the point? But you, you see the point. All the screaming girls there. So yeah, well all the all the girls up front are staged. They're all paid. They don't let real fans you, onto you, the. You, you onto mean the field. you mean all those girls just ended up that didn't end up there just by total random chance and no nope. and, and I know weird. Hmm. How all of them somehow look like models? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very it's very strange. It's a conspiracy. It is. Hmm. It's like they only wanted the most attractive people to be on camera for the Super Bowl how, halftime show. How come they didn't call me? They only wanted the most attractive people on the halftime show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, what about Bill Belichick's sweatshirt? You like that? Yeah, he, his, his homemade his yeah, homemade sleeve. Yeah, his homemade short sleeveless sleeve sweatshirt. Yeah. The hoodie. The hood. The hoodie. Um, no, but I, it was, uh, you know, I guess I didn't hate it as bad as everyone else, you know, it was, but you know, it was a great, it was a great defensive battle. And so I don't mind defensive, I didn't mind defensive battles. Uh, um, and, uh, Tom Brady, uh, went Tom Brady in the, in, uh, the next to last drive and did, did what he, did what he had to do. And New England's defense was totally awesome and shut down. Sean McVay's vaunted Los Angeles Rams. I don't. What in the hell happened to Todd Gurley the last couple games? I mean, he just like fell off the face of the map. I don't. I don't know what his deal is. He's got to be injured or something. But the, but gosh, their game plan with him is totally just just went away. What do you think of the game, Elias? Well, after my nap from the first <laughs> half, <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty boring actually. Uh, on all honesty, though, I don't follow football at all. Um, I'm so busy working yeah, and you, hunting and fishing that I don't even keep up with most pop culture and stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, if, if you're certainly if you're not a football fan, you know, if you, if you just want to see some action and and stuff going on that would be that was a tougher one to watch but uh yeah that's um, the one game i watch every year and i mean i played football before and things like that it's just not something i follow i enjoy watching it but it wasn't a action-packed game <laughs> yeah no no it was what played I, played between the 40s <laughs> what i don't like is how terrible the commercials are there used to be you, you could yeah. look forward to the super bowl a little bit because the commercials were funny inventive and entertaining so it was the one time a year that you could watch the entire football game and and not be pissed off every time it went to commercial but this year they're just and things are getting more poli the and politically correct and we got to say this and that and uh, budweiser they spent a boatload i mean that that whole uh, uh medieval times theme that they got going on and everything which i kind of i, I kind of liked it dilly dilly I, yeah I liked it when they were rolling around that big thing of corn sweetener and trying to trying to find a home for it, and they finally found a Coors Light, and, <laughs> <laughs> and so that was that was kind of good. So I th I thought I thought I thought I was I was okay with the with the Bud Light commercials. Well, I think that uh, about uh, tears it down for the day. So uh, we thank you all very much for listening. Um, One more time, where can people find you? Alice? I knew you. You were going to ask me that too, huh? What you were, you were going to ask me where we could find me too? You just so I could stumble through that again. Would it really be a Mark Rupi Outdoors podcast if I did not? No, but go ahead, Elias. <laughs> tell, tell, tell as our as our guest, give, tell us one more time. So yeah, featherraft dot com is our website. Uh, Facebook group is featherraft. Instagram is at feather underscore raft, and YouTube is coalface. One seven three, C O A L F A C E. My preferred no. means of camouflage. <laughs> okay, there you go. Charcoal. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, and you can find us on 
Mark Group, www.markgroupyoutdoors.com. You can find us on the community at uh, the community show TV. Find us on Instagram at the community show. You can find us on our Facebook page, the community show or Mark mm-hmm. Groupie outdoors. And you can find us at YouTube, the community show. So did I miss any there? Nope. And as always, Ryer on Tinder. So thank Not you. Not on Tinder anymore. <laughs> Remember <laughs> the girlfriend is listening to this. We okay. Have to, she'll get, you're on Tinder still? <laughs> still. I thought you said you deleted that. <laughs> we had this discussion. Ryer's girlfriend, I always, I always give him a bad time about that. So I wouldn't even know if he's on Tinder. I just have to say he's on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you very much for listening. And uh, we will see you next time on Mark Rupi Outdoors, the podcast.